saying this is the best show in Africa. Welcome to everybody who's tuned in right now. You can use the hashtag KTN Life and Style hashtag Artistic Tuesday, and that goes the title of the show. So if you're out there and joining us for the first time, this is Artistic Tuesday, and I'll be your host, Brian Asseli. This time around, I decided to move out of the studio, and throughout the year, we're going to make sure that we get to the art spaces where artists are doing different things. So how about we start with Kyoko Art Gallery in Lovington? We want to meet Kyoko and talk to him about some of the things that he's doing at the art gallery. If, you are, are, uh, if you're an art lover, then definitely this is the space that you need to join because we want you to create some more stuff. Right about now, I want us to take that mighty walk as we go in and find Kyoko Monyeo. Sindio, sisi out. Good morning. How good morning, you? good morning. Good to see you, man. Nice to see you. Karibu finally, sana. Finally, I can put a face to a name or a name to a face. <laughs> Either way, name or face or face to the man or face to whatever you are looking at. But welcome to the Kyoko Art Gallery. Asante sana. So people yes. want to get to know your name. Yes. Maybe both names. Alafu, utatuambia a little bit about the art gallery. Uh, my name is Kyoko Mutiki. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a sculptor and uh, I run the Kyoko Art Gallery. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the best thing I can do is just to take you inside mm -hmm. and, and show you what it's all about. But before we walk inside, yes. we'd like you to talk to us about maybe the opening hours and what the gallery is all about. Um, this gallery is, um, is here to navigate the space for young creatives mm -hmm. and people who, have, um, an, you know, people who have a desire to exhibit art mm -hmm. in a space that is very dynamic. And uh, it's basically uh, the, the, the new space for young creatives in Nairobi. We want to change the game of art in Kenya. We want young people to own their art and we want them to make money. This is all about money. We're going to uh, be talking about the yes. money later, but yes. right now, opening hours? Opening hours is from 9 o'clock in the morning up to 7 in the evening. Uh, and we are open from Monday to Sunday. Uh, you want to take me inside? Now? Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Let me take you inside. Let me take you inside. Um, so here we are. This is our reception area and this is our, our gallery manager. Her name is uh, Victoria. Oh, nice. So this is where we start the tour. Hi Victoria. And uh, <laughs> from here <laughs> very, very. Um, you, 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 you can go either to the main gallery or to the upstairs place where we teach or you can go to the washrooms or more space that has more material culture. But this is where it all starts. I want to go to the main gallery. Okay, okay. here we are. So I'll lead you on. Come with me. Come with me. Come with me. I'll take you on. So this is how you come in. So this is the space. So we start here. And then this is the main space where we do the main exhibitions. Uh, this is where artists uh, now come and showcase their work. Especially an artist who wants to launch themselves. This is the place. This is our theatre for young artists who want to launch themselves, and this is where we, this is where we now do. This is where it all happens. This is where it all happens. All happens. This is the place I want to be. This is the place you want to be. Then this is where you want to come. This <laughs> that's, is where you want to come. That's really amazing. I love your personality. Buddy. Yes, thank you, thank you, and, thank and you. it's such an honor because I usually just pass this place every okay. every week and I see a gallery, yes. but I have never paid attention to that. And uh, but I've seen you on social media, and that's why I decided to come here today. I'm glad you've come. We're I'm glad, glad that you've you come. could host us today, and I'd like you to just talk about when you started, even as an artist, because you've done a whole lot of different things. You've traveled the world, but we just want you to talk to us about uh, probably when you started as an artist. Um, I've been in the art world for quite a while. I think I'm one of the older crops of artists who you would want to put me maybe probably around the same time when Gallery Watatu was there. But uh, I started off um, in my art journey um, from uh, Kenyatta University. I'm a graduate art teacher. Mm -hmm. I have a degree in fine art. I taught at Consolata Primary in Westlands mm -hmm. at some point uh, in the 90s. And I left uh, teaching in 1992. Mm -hmm. And from there, I embarked on my private practice. Uh, so it's been a long journey from then up to now. But um, just to revive you, uh, to take you back a bit, um, I've had an experience in welding in the Juakali sector. Mm -hmm. So part of my practice in art, especially in my sculpture, which is what I do, is uh, an acquired blend of things that I did during my stint mm -hmm. uh, as a Juakali artist. 
and, and I think that is where a lot of artists in this country have come from because we have not formalized uh, art in this country so we have all kinds of arts mm -hmm. which is good in a way uh, that we don't formalize it that we have artists creeping in mm -hmm. or sneaking in or coming out of any facet of the society mm -hmm. so I don't know that I've answered your question there you have because yes. I just wanted to know how you started and where you started yes. being a teacher now the transition into owning a gallery yes is, is what I really like to capture because we are here now yes and uh, we totally want to understand just the step by step of how you came into being an art gallery. I also exhibited a lot um, in the National Museums. I'm one of the artists who formed uh, the core group of artists who actually started the contemporary um, the gallery of contemporary East African art mm -hmm. at the National Museums. And from there, we had a big group of artists who started forming small groups. One of the most famous groups that we had was, of course, uh, my studio which was known uh, Black Rungu Art Studio mm -hmm. which was based in uh, Mwemuto mm -hmm. in Wangige mm -hmm. and then we had other studios that came up around the same time like Engesha Artist Studio uh, those were the two very prominent studios in Nairobi then mm -hmm. in the art world and uh, we had also other artists who were off, off meaning you are not part of the museum mm -hmm. you are not part of the uh, um, gallery watatu mm -hmm. and you're not part of other players like the sarang gallery also which had a, a bigger share market mm -hmm. and it was based on uh, standard street so we had artists who were i would call them uh, deviants mm -hmm. and i'm part of that group of deviant artists <laughs> who never got into the mainstream okay. because we didn't believe in the kind of art that was being peddled around mm -hmm. we wanted to do our art we wanted to express ourselves mm -hmm. and we didn't want people to limit our creativity and imagination. Mm -hmm. So I think from there we created the movement of what you might call uh, artists who are self, mm -hmm. um, I would say self, um, either self-promoting or artists who are now creating uh, their own concepts without being told what to do. Mm -hmm. And I think now this is real fire because uh, this is what we are doing in this gallery now. I never knew that at one point in Kenya artists will just you know, do what they want to do. One interesting fact about what you're talking to me, we had a chit chat earlier on yes. and you talked to me about how you came to choose the artist who exhibited their pieces and you yes. told me they're not like people who've been in the industry for a very long time. Yeah. Why, why that? Because in most of the places for you to exhibit, you must have exhibited in other different places. But for you, it's more like you're young, you just came up yes. with something, yes. we're going to exhibit your yeah. pieces. And they're the actually selling and they have price tags. Exactly, and they sell. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is to change the game plan and also to make artists in Kenya own their art. Mm -hmm. And by owning art, I mean, we are trying to... There's a, there's a space or there's something we're trying to dismantle. Mm -hmm. We are removing the brokers in art, and they've been there for a long time in Kenya. We have a lot of institutions in Kenya that are funded, and the funding, um, if you remember what we said in our little chit chat, mm -hmm. when you start funding art, you start killing art. When you have people put together in a small group and they are told what to paint, you're, you're already messing up with their psyche, mm -hmm. and you're stopping them from creating out of their heart. Mm -hmm. So what this gallery is trying to do is to dismantle that space remove the brokers and show you the artist himself naked mm -hmm. the way he was born and what he's doing mm -hmm. and people need to see more of that the more people see that the more they appreciate kenyan artists because you're seeing the artist like he was meant to be mm -hmm. like who he is without covering him without uh, trying to put him on a pedestal or try to lift him up to make him what he is not mm -hmm. and that's why you find at the moment there's a complete dismantling of systems of art in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Galleries are they're struggling. We're not struggling, but you know, we have other galleries that are struggling mm -hmm. because in themselves they had selected a small group of people and they were trying to show that these are the people who own Kenyan art mm -hmm. and this, this is Kenyan art, which is not true. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is we're telling Kenyans, come see Kenyan art. Let's show choose people for yourself. Let's show people the yes. Kenyan art. Yes. So let's go around yeah. and just try and look at some of the yes. pieces and yeah. let me yeah, let me take you around. Yeah. Take me around. So um, what we have here is a um, is a group show mm -hmm. of um, artists who um, came together and they are creatives, they are poets, mm -hmm. they are painters, some of them are architects, 
some of them are just normal people mm -hmm. just doing normal things but they have a desire to communicate they have a desire to express themselves through art and they are not necessarily famous artists mm -hmm. and they are not people who are doing this because they want to sell mm -hmm. these are just a bunch of people who like painting you can call them hobby painters mm -hmm. if you want and we give them a show we that's, give them a show that's really exciting yes. especially for someone like me yes like i would draw but then my parents at home would tell me you know what you can't stay in the yeah. house from morning till evening yeah so is this also a space where young people come and and just express themselves and do you charge them for we don't charge uh, uh, young artists to come here especially beginners we try and help them and mentor them and navigate the space then after that we give them a show mm -hmm. but also we are trying to use the space to completely break down the idea that parents have that art does not make money mm -hmm. art does not pay art is not a profession we are trying to tell people that art is a very serious profession mm -hmm. and that's why we are trying to focus on young people who are maybe a little bit disillusioned in their art or in mm -hmm. their creativity that they come here and will restore their faith in art. This is also the place that parents should come. Mm -hmm. Really, it's very important for parents to come here mm -hmm. and see at what level art can take their children. Do you have a favorite work of art today? <laughs> Do I have a favorite uh, <laughs> piece of art? Yeah, mm -hmm. there are a bunch of pieces I can look uh, around here, but uh, about maybe uh, I'll, I'll show you one piece, maybe this one. Okay. This let's is an interesting piece. Let's start with this one then. Yeah, which is um, very expressive in terms of uh, children's faces mm -hmm. and uh, what we are trying to do also is encourage creativity from within mm -hmm. uh, there is a lot of richness in our culture and also a lot of depth in our communities every single day there is something very exciting happening and what artists do mm -hmm. all over the world mm -hmm. they capture everyday events and these are the events or these are the things that we want to show people. We want to show people Kenyan art. We want to show people our lives. You know, that's one thing you told me. Earlier. It's very important. And you told me that most of our artists yeah. are concentrating on maybe artivism uh, in that they want to just talk about freedom and the struggles and everything. Yes. Which is more politicized as compared to just who we are. Yes. We, we and, really and don't mind. to sell the culture. Yeah, yeah. We really don't mind, you know, art, you know, political statements. Artists have always been known through history mm -hmm. to make political statements. But that should not override the fact that even in life there are beautiful flowers and there are beautiful smiles. Mm -hmm. It is the duty of the artist to reflect all this. Mm -hmm. The smiles, the flowers, the bees and the struggle. Mm -hmm. So none of this is more superior to the other one. Wow. And that's what we want to show here. This is really expressive. Yeah. Like that's your favorite yeah, it's one maybe of my mine. Maybe, maybe you'll find yours around when you look the around. There, there are a lot uh, of probably pieces. Just talk to us about uh, uh, that one as this well. This is also an artist who uh, he, he is the same artist we looked at mm -hmm. um, down there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Mayban, and he 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 is very interested in facial expressions, mm -hmm. especially children, and uh, everyday simple acts that happen with children. Mm -hmm. He specializes in that. So he's one of the artists we are hosting this in is, the gallery. At the this is really amazing because it's realism. Yeah. So it's a little bit of almost maybe photorealism, but not quite. Mm -hmm. It's uh, acrylic paint, but very realistic. Nice. Very realistic. Yeah. Nice. And yeah. there's also, my director loves this one. My producer. Yes. My producer, this, Innocent, this, loves this one. Yeah, this <laughs> is a young man. It's a young man. His name is Kevin. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kevin is a recycling artist. He uses recycled parts to make things. And he's also an inventor of, uh, I think he invents things that are not uh, common here. Mm -hmm. I, I, it looks like a space, uh, space, space motorbike. We call it Nduthi. Or space Nduthi. <laughs> <laughs> I think he probably he will sell it to people who, he should sell to SpaceX, the people are trying to go to Mars. Yes, SpaceX or guys in Hollywood. Or guys in Hollywood, yeah. So will make, make a very good debut in a Hollywood. It would, yeah. But, but it's uh, basically recycling yeah, uh, material. Yeah, basically recycling. Uh -huh. And again, what we are saying, we're giving all these young people the crazy ideas, uh -huh. uh, space to exhibit the ideas. How we're are you just able to, to maintain your free spirit? Because people would think that maybe over the years you'd be like that person who becomes more like a parent, like don't do this, don't do that. You seem not to have limits when it comes to expression and how do you keep it um, lively? You, you keep it lively by not detaching yourself from society and also not detaching yourself mm -hmm. from the creative. When you live in a thriving, vibrant, um, chaotic 
artistic environment, mm -hmm. that's where you should be as a creative person. You should not distance yourself. We also have a problem here in this country that we have artists sometimes who create in isolation. They are out there in the bundles alone, mm -hmm. creating, painting alone, mm -hmm. doing your things alone. Yeah. Uh, you will not grow in isolation. You grow within the community. Yeah. And for me, I feel there's a very strong energy that I get from working with the creative people. So that keeps me going as opposed to isolating myself. Mm -hmm. So I prefer being in a dynamic um, environment of other artists, young artists like Kevin or mm -hmm. artists who are coming to exhibit here. Like That's Vibran, what yeah. brings the vibrancy okay. in art. Speaking of vibrance, yes. this is not the only vibrant room here. Yeah. <laughs> you want to take me around? Yes, sure. Okay. I'll, I'll take you around. I'll take you around mm -hmm. uh, and show you. Uh, so, yeah, this is uh, the other space. Uh, and by I will use this for art merchandising. Mm -hmm. So what happens here is we use this as a launching and training ground for young artists where they learn how to merchandise. So this shop is a shop for artists who are merchandising the art, meaning that... Uh, Do they have to be from this gallery or it's from different galleries? No, it's from, di from different, uh, there are different artists, I mean all over the country. Okay. They come here, they bring the ideas, we work on them, we tell them they have to be a specific size so that it becomes easy to sell and easy to carry and something somebody can pick and take and put in the house. market or you also do exports? We also do exports. So there's a lot of hakuna matata, hakuna matata. Yes, <laughs> we, 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 try to, we try to reach out to all the markets. Mm -hmm. So the idea is also anybody visiting Kenya on a short trip or on a, you know, anybody who wants to buy a gift from Kenya mm -hmm. can also pick your most, you know, provide your hakuna matata, which mm -hmm. is, yeah, sure. uh, you know, easy something to pick. But we have a lot of original pieces from uh, artists. This lady um, um, from um, Kirdi, it's a young lady who does ceramics. And she's based at Kirdi. And she does nice ceramics. And, uh, you know, from here she can reach the world because we have a lot of people visit the gallery. Then she can get her orders. So it's a whole idea of also introducing the artists to the market and connecting them with the buyers. So it's different forms of, of art. This is Glassware. This is glassware which is printed locally by local artists. So uh, it's, a, it's an original design. It's an original design by the artist here. And then we have this and we also have uh, we have this small little painting by an artist called Mbatia mm -hmm. um, who is a Kenyan artist and does a lot of that's, merchandise. That's yeah. ink it's pen and ink. Mixed media. Mixed media. Okay. It's actually called a wash. Mm -hmm. Pen and ink wash. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, yeah we have little things all over the place. We yeah. have these little paintings you can get a bigger painting of this and and this is a, a, a good example of art merchandising mm -hmm. uh, for those who cannot afford the bigger painting mm -hmm. you can buy a smaller one mm -hmm. and that way the artist is able to make money out of small pieces mm -hmm. and we are very strong about art merchandising because this has been the biggest problem for artists in kenya mm -hmm. is how to make money out of the art you told me one interesting thing as we were having a conversation just cruising on from the other room yes yes and you talked to me about pattern thing ideas or just yes we so, so an artist comes up with an original design an do artist they take they take a pattern they do they get a patent for do they patent the original design or do they patent the idea they patent the original design okay the idea can be copied by so many artists like if for example if you're a musician and you're singing about love you cannot patent the word love because it's a universal you know topic but if you have a song that is about love and is uni uniquely yours then you can patent that if you come up with a unique concept as an artist you can patent that the original piece but anything that is outside that original piece you have no control okay. so the style remains but your original piece yes you told me about how you can be able to replicate the original piece. you can replicate the original piece you can have those uh you know either have something we call editions. Mm -hmm. What artists actually do is they do what is called limited editions. Okay. So you can have one out of a thousand or one out of a hundred mm -hmm. or one out of fifteen and you sign that and you're done. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that comes outside that edition is fake. Okay. It's not yours. But how, how can you be able to monitor the fake and the original? Uh, I think you can if you have you know things like watermarks mm -hmm. on them and you have the edition number and you have the artist signature. Mm -hmm. There are many ways to authenticize. 
uh, the original art of an artist. But of course, with the technology now, you have a lot of fakes, mm -hmm. uh, knockoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, that has happened to me, of course, uh, in my career as a sculptor. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many people doing knockoffs of my work, but that's part of the business. Uh, can you can you sue them? Uh, you cannot sue them because the knockoffs are not originals. Okay. They are sort they've, of. They've accepted that they are knockoffs. They yes. They are not original, okay. and they are a little bit uh, different from the original piece. The moment the piece has a little change, then it's not yours. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to just see or have a taste of yes. the other side of the shop. Yeah, sure. Um, really just the taken through the eye of the lens and probably just capture. Yeah, let me let me lead you on. Do you want to come after me? Yeah, true. So this is the other part of the shop, and uh, like I said, you can buy little knickknacks, you can buy little things like this, mm -hmm. which are gift items. And the original, these are original brands of Kyoko that have been created uh, from our workshops. Uh, the other thing that I do is I have designs that I make and give out to creative people. Like, we've worked a lot with the artists in Gikomba, the artisans in Gikomba. So what I do, I can come up with a concept or a design and give it to them and they can mass produce it to make money. Because the other thing that we lack here is our proper designers designers who can design something and have people reproduce and copy that so that we don't have the same boring thing repeated over and over again okay. so this is what the shop is all about yeah, but yeah. nice pieces right here yeah this is a, a lady her name is uh, is jane mm -hmm. and um, she works with um, this piece of handmade mm -hmm. notebooks and uh, their diaries these are 2020 mm -hmm. and she uses fabric to cover the notebooks and it's easy but then even choosing the fabric and mixing choosing the fabric and awesome. choosing the colors also is very um, very important but this is what I was talking about art merchandising where the artist is able to uh, just make money out of uh, creative minds and creating things that are easy to sell should be very uh, interesting yeah I, I want to go more 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 into the other room okay uh, yeah. um, we can take you up uh -huh. uh, to the other side and I can show you up what okay. we have here Thank um, you. There's more space upstairs, uh, which is a, a more sort of interactive space where artists can come and meet and uh -huh. talk about uh, their ideas and discuss uh, concepts. Uh -huh. And we also use the space to talk to people uh -huh. and uh, the young artists who come so that uh, it's more interactive. Uh -huh. It's also a classroom, but it's more of an open space where ideas are created. So it's a very important space that artists can come and meet and talk about things that they want to do. Let's look at some of the work. Yes. If I will tell me about the designers. Yes, this is a, this is a very interesting artist. Her name is Shiko. Mm -hmm. Shiko is an architect okay. turned artist. So Wait, she. So people even switch careers. Yes, they switch the opposite to the opposite. And speaking of architects, you yes. also told me that. Kenyan architects can tap into this market. How, yes. be, how best can they be able to? Uh, by, by just making sure that uh, they're using a lot of art in their buildings, mm -hmm. that they come here because we are a, a serious gallery and, and we are authentic mm -hmm. with Kenyan art, that they promote these young artists, mm -hmm. take their art and use it in buildings that they're building, mm -hmm. or talk to clients who can come and buy local art, because I think it's very important to support local artists local art. and they are very good as so you can, they can see actually use the Kenyan art instead yes. of the instead of importing foreign art yeah. which does not sometimes the theme the themes don't even resonate with what we are here yeah. and uh, that kind of robs the local artist a chance to survive through their creativity okay. so I would want to ask architects to really be more involved so in Shiko comes here and Shiko comes here she, uh, she has ex exhibited here mm -hmm. before we gave her a show last year which did very well so she's one of our artists who we are very happy to work with. Nice. Yeah. I'm seeing Nelson Mandela right behind you. Yes, the this is a, an artist. His name is Victor Omondi also, mm -hmm. uh, who uses a almost very realistic sort of expression. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's also one of the artists we took in uh, late last year. And, uh, is this hyper-realism? No, it's just painting. It's, it's, it's acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's painting, but uh, you can see that it's very... Uh, there's a lot of detail in it, meaning that the artist has immersed himself into his work. Mm -hmm. So that is also, um, it gives you a fresh breath of different art. It gives you, tells you how many varieties of art we have here. Mm -hmm. So we like moving from one extreme 
to the other extreme. Does it take years to master that? Because some people are born artists and some are some learn, so they acquire the skill. Uh, it depends. There are some who are born with it. There are some who pick it up as they grow old. In fact, we have a very interesting case here. We have an old man who walked in sometimes last day in November. Mm -hmm. He's almost 70. And he said he's always felt inside him there's art. Mm -hmm. And we took him up as a student. Uh, it would be very interesting to meet him. Is he doing yes. great pieces? Yes, he's learning. And he, he's decided to, to explode. Oh, nice. And, and <laughs> I want to be like that. You know, yes. Sometimes they say when you turn 30 plus, yeah. you know, yeah. 50 or 40, you can't be able to maybe manage new hobbies, but you guys have been able to have yeah, yeah. someone who's 70 years old. 70 years old, yeah. That's nice. Let's talk yeah. about the flower petal. Yeah. This is the same artist also. Mm -hmm. uh, he likes working from, uh, um, moving from, he likes color a lot. Mm -hmm. And so his movement in color is very, um, it's just very interesting how he moves from one tone mm -hmm. to another one. So it's the same artist mm -hmm. and it's the same artist there. Mm -hmm. that's and, and the piece at the mm -hmm. end, yeah, that's Victor, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so those are the kind of artists we have. This is Tindi. Tindi is a Ugandan artist. Mm -hmm. We also have a lot of diaspora artists here. Yeah, I've, I've seen an expression of a Nigerian and yes. American. Yes, yeah. because uh, again, Nairobi or Kenya is the uh, is the Hong Kong of East Africa. Mm -hmm. It's also the, um, you know, I would call it uh, the art basil yeah. of East Africa, in the sense that most artists will come here to showcase their work and sell the art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to get to learn more and more and more about the art gallery, but then there are some things I'd also like to capture. Is the government really assisting you guys directly or indirectly? Or do you prefer um, that as an artist you just start and maybe you work your way around it? Yeah. I think artists should not ever imagine that they'll get support from the government or from institutions because creativity comes from within. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most important thing is to make sure as you work, uh, you remain true to yourself mm -hmm. and other things will follow. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be very interested, of course, to have uh, a lot of government support in these mm -hmm. programs. Like the government... Uh, you know, putting rules into place where they are asking architects mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that at least 10% or 5% of whatever is spent on a building mm -hmm. is spent on art, mm -hmm. that they buy art and put art in those buildings. Mm -hmm. I would also want to do a very, I mean, what I really want to do is we need to separate art from sports. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We need to separate art from sports. When you lump art with sports, uh, it loses its own flair. Mm -hmm. Art and sports are not the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that has been a big problem in this country, where art is never taken seriously because it's mixed with sports. Yeah. And it's a very dynamic, uh, it's a very dynamic um, uh, part of the youth right now. Most of the money being generated by youth all over the world, about 80% of what the youth are making is from creativity. Mm -hmm is from their own creative in any way, whether it's directing, whether it's in IT, whether it's in painting, whether it's in fashion. Mm -hmm. So you cannot neglect this uh, creativity mm -hmm. at this moment in time. Mm -hmm. So the government has to take it seriously. And I would ask the government if it is possible to separate art from sports. What's the legacy? Which legacy do you want to leave us, Kiyoko? Because you already have an art gallery under your name. And I believe that's not your goal, really. You, you have an extended kind of uh, dream and vision. But what's the legacy you'd like to leave behind as Kyoko? Uh, no, I just want to be that person who opened up a space for young artists uh, in Kenya, for them to be able to create freely mm -hmm. and for them to be able to make money out of their art. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Of course, that will be what I want to see is more young people taking up art without fear mm -hmm. and without parents fearing art and thinking art is something that will never make their kids successful. Mm -hmm. Another thing I would love to see, like I said, you know, I'll be very happy if I woke up one day and I found that there's a whole ministry of art nice. minus sports. Minus. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here with us. But we'd like you to just give us a parting shot. Yes. Maybe that final remark that you've always wanted to maybe say when you're on TV. <laughs> uh, well, what I can say is that art is live in Kenya. And that uh, I think Kenya is going to be the next destination for art in the world. Mm -hmm. This is the collector's den. Mm -hmm. For real. 
for real. This is it. Thank you for creating time Welcome. to be here with us. Karim Sana. And it's amazing. And that's how we go in a short commercial break. If you're out there, thank you very much. We've been at the Kyoko Art Gallery. It's at Lovington. Make sure that you get to pass by. If you're a young artist, aspiring or established, make sure that you pass by and make sure that you just come and express yourself. We go on a short commercial break to Kirudi. It's about to get bigger and better.